Hi everybody, this is Brazy. Welcome to a Speak Your Truth video blog. Well, the police state is in Queensland and it's in in full force. Act that was going through all the bikey laws were just basically a precursor to a police state being brought in in Queensland. And people said, hey, you guys are just a bunch of conspiracy theorists. You think there's terror behind everything. And you know, the reality is, and I, and I heard it best written on a mem the other day, where it said, where we said, look, what we tend to do is not think that there's evil behind absolutely everything. What we do is research it. We check it out, we deliver the research, and then what we give you is something that is normally pretty frightening to most people. And that, I tend to find pretty accurate. And let me tell you what has been the result of these so-called bikey laws. Das war ein Befehl! Der Angriffsteigers war ein Befehl! Verschickt sie! And let me tell you, it has been pretty frightening, and I can tell you for a fact because I live in the state where these bikey laws have actually been put in. Now, only yesterday, Campbell Newman, our Premier, he came out and he decided to compare the bikies to cancer. That's right. He decided to compare them to cancer and then said that his new VLAD laws were the same as chemotherapy and that he needed to bring these evil laws in to be able to go after this cancer. The that Premier is the has bikey. compared his government's anti bikey laws to cancer treatment. Comparing gang crime to cancer. Once the cancer is uh, eliminated from the body, we don't keep taking chemotherapy drugs or having wow. radiation therapy, you know? Isn't that the ultimate example of the Hegelian dialectic that we are fed every single day? You know that old, here's a problem, I'll offer an even bigger solution type of garbage? This is probably one of the biggest. Because, uh, you know what, for once, I actually agree with Campbell Newman, the Premier, and Jared Balaji, I actually agree with him because, let's face it, chemotherapy, as a report stated in August 2003, it is rendered ineffective 90% of the time, just like these VLAD laws. In fact, if you have a look at the VLAD laws, the statistic, and this has been phenomenal since they were actually brought in, They've only found very low-level people. Their ability to actually get people, uh, you know, convicted of high-level drugs or, or, or actually get people convicted of organized crime has been, I believe, about 3.4%. So that would put them right in line with uh, the ineffectiveness of chemotherapy at around the 97%. So those statistics do tend to go hand in hand. So for once in his whole political career has said something accurate. Now, let me give you some more examples of what's actually going on in this um, beautiful Queensland state. And by the way, we, we have had a wonderful summer, but you'll only find that out on a current affair after all the really bad news of drunken violence and bikies and so on and so forth. We've also been told that the police no longer actually have to wear identification badges. Why? Because the regime don't like it. That's right, police don't have to wear badges, they just have to ask you for your identification and tell you what to do. It's phenomenal. Another example of where the police laws are getting out of control is in Townsville only a week or so ago, a gentleman was booked doing one kilometer over the speed limit. That's right. He got done doing 61 kilometers an hour in a 60 zone. I can't even go one kilometer an hour on my push bike. And the police officer admitted that he was doing it trying to just reach his KPI. So he was just raising revenue. He was putting in a control mechanism 
and he has to now do so many arrests and give so many tickets. So in Queensland, we now actually have scorecards that the police actually have to achieve, which is forcing them to break the law and take away people's freedoms uh, in order to reach their scorecards. It, it's getting absolutely Civil ridiculous. Fear police will feel pressure to write tickets for menial offences to keep their jobs under a new system to evaluate their performance. A scorecard will soon be used, taking into account how many fines they issue. Expect to see more of this. It's not just to reduce the road toll. Police will now be performance managed on how many tickets they write. This was followed up by a father, and we've just been through an absolute heat wave here in Australia, unlike, of course, in the Northern Hemisphere, and, uh, and of course, unlike in Antarctica, where the uh, global warming ship was locked in ice in the middle of summer, uh, trying to find the ice melting, but that's another story. This father was in a suburban street and just wound down the window about three inches. I believe it's about that much. And he wound down that window three inches so that his daughter wouldn't be hot. So they went in to visit their grandparents, came back out 10 minutes later, and a police officer, because he has to now give away tickets to reach his scorecard, not to make the place any safer or, you know, not to be a public servant and do his job, he actually gave a ticket away because the car wasn't secured. $44 for leaving your window down too far. It's drawn harsh criticism, but police say it's to remind people to protect themselves from thieves. The officer acted quite appropriately and within the law. The union claims officers who don't meet targets may lose their job. Like, there are... You know, the burglars are going to have all, all of the sniffer detectors. They're going to be able to say, there's a car that's got its window down three inches. I'm just going to go and, and burgle you. I mean, it, it, this is just literally getting out of control. And it is a result of the fact that you've got these crazy laws in place. We literally also had uh, six gentlemen uh, in a pub in the, the Sunshine Coast in Yandina who were having a beer, and regardless of whether they were all bikies or not, they all got arrested and can now do a minimum of three to six months in what is considered to be Guantanamo Bay style, 22 hours a day in solitary confinement, wearing, get this, a pink jumpsuit. Why? Because they were all having a beer together in a pub because one or two of them may be a bikie. Even the guy who delivered a pizza right? He's considered an associate. Now, I think this is going to make the price of pizzas go up because I would hate to be a pizza delivery guy. When you place the order, you'll be like, uh, have you ever been in a bikey club or have you got any tattoos? <laughs> because um, I don't want to deliver the pizza and get arrested and go away for three to six months in solitary confinement. These bikey laws are literally getting out of control. Now, all jokes aside, it's not just the bikies who are under threat. It's absolutely everybody who can be under threat under these new bikie laws. We said it, we know it, and now it's coming to fruition. Jared Blasey has decided, which is our Attorney General in Queensland, by the way, he wants to bring in facial recognition scanning devices and a centralized computer uh, software that will go into the government and of course your license will be scanned every single place you go because of an absolute few minority. That of course is what they're really after. And of course they just start to deem everybody drinking in a group as the nasty people and they're creating this police state right in front of us and it's completely out of control and we're going to end up forking out all the money just like they do to the TSA because someone got done with one punch can kill. Now there's, I, I, I think it's a terrible thing, I think it's, it, is, it is a horror to think that some 18 year old kid has had their life cut short because they've gone out and some guys decided to punch them in the head. So we're using the bikey task force now to start to go after young people drinking uh, in drinking precincts like King's Cross or more importantly up there in Surface Paradise or in, or in Brisbane City etc. So you can see where they're starting to create a major problem saying that this one punch can kill is an epidemic 
where the, the statistics show it's actually not really an epidemic. But the goal is, of course, they want to create more control, get more visual scenarios occurring, and of course, absolutely create a situation where they can get a centralized computer and monitor people absolutely all the time and get facial recognition software uh, in place. And they're allowed to do it. The worst part is, it's the police's fault. They're calling a situation that's occurred in Surface Paradise a mini riot broke out. Well, the mini riot broke out, okay, because a guy got punched in the face, there's a one punch can kill scenario, went to the police for help, and he got arrested because the police have a zero tolerance mentality. That's right, the police have a zero tolerance mentality. So they don't ask questions. A guy's been punched in the head, he needs assistance, the police then arrest the guy who's been punched in the head because they have a zero tolerance mentality. So what I'm getting at here is the police are the ones who have now been given unlimited power. They're getting out of control. They're starting to, to hit people. They're starting to assault people. And then they're turning around and saying, well, there was a mini riot. Well, of course there was a mini riot. You've just grabbed somebody who's trying to get help from you because they've been assaulted. And of course their friends are trying to come to their aid because you're arresting him for no reason. This is the issue that we've got. And then you're calling for more powers after the police have done the wrong thing. This is a total scam. And I think we can start to see what's happening here. And it's not a question of, w of when. It's a question of the fact that it is happening right now in Queensland. And it will just be the setup for it to spread all around the country. Because the reality is, eventually they will repeal these laws and then the bikies will come back, or as I predict, we're going to see, as they did when they bring, when they take away, uh, or sorry, when they bring in actual uh, uh, gun restrictions, we see increased crime or increased violent crime occur. We're going to see exactly the same situation occur when they get rid of these bikies. You're going to take away the bikies, and then you're going to increase the actual number of violent crimes occurring. And then, of course, there's going to be a scream from the government and the politicians saying, we need more laws. We need VLAD on steroids. This is brazy. These are my predictions. This is what I think is going wrong. And let me tell you, the police state is here, and, and the police state is here because it's what the regime wants. For my safety, could you please put that down for my safety? No, that's actually for my safety, make my family safety. I don't know who you are, you're not identifying yourself to I'm me. I'm allowed to film police. Yeah. So I'm not obstructing you in your line of duty. Well, you have already, actually. No, you I didn't give me a license when I required it first no. off when we first intercepted you approximately five minutes ago. I don't okay? think so. So, well, I've got it on, I've actually got it on recording here, mm. which is why it's a service station. Mm -hmm. so. Is there any reason you hate police? Because you've pulled me over 21 times. Oh, for really? no reason. Yeah. Oh, right. And I've had two infringements and I've fought them both in court and won them both because they were bogus. They are? Sorry? Just for the outfit you're wearing today, can you just identify to me what that is? What uh, you're wearing? Jeans, shirt and a vest. Can you identify to me like what's on the vest? It's, it's 30 degrees out at the moment, so can you just describe to me what's on your vest? Um, I don't understand the question. Okay, it's just it's really hot outside and you're wearing a leather vest. I'm just wondering why, why you're wearing a vest. I always wear a vest when I ride. Okay, and the, and the patches on those vests? Yep. Please identify what they mean to me. I don't have to identify. You don't have to identify. You can them. read them. Yeah. Can you explain to me what the Misfits is, though? We're a social motorcycle club. A social motorcycle yep. club. Is that the SMC? Yep. Yeah. Oh, you just got wearing your little Harley buckle there. Yep. So where do you normally reside? It's on my license. It's on your license. Yep. Oh, okay. So you normally win in person. Yep. Oh, okay. Great. Is there any reason why you're actually here today? I just come for a ride. Did you? Yeah. Alright. So where have you been riding today? Um, I went into the city to my place of work yep. and I came out the Logan Motorway. Yep. I can decide to come down here for a bit of a ride. Okay. And I needed fuel, turned around, and I'm going to go back home. Okay. Up cool. the motorway. So do, you, so do you normally hang around Beanley or is this just... No. No? No. Just go for a ride wherever. But do you guys need all three cars here because I'm some kind of a threat to you? These officers are just going to stand with you just while I run some checks and the registration of your vehicle and your license to make sure you like the license to drop. Thank you.